All right, everyone take your seat and begin to shut up. My name is Professor Jerk, and you are in... Trainable. <laughs> hey, everyone. I hope you're feeling well. I have a slight headache, so I'm postponing the Kraken video and figured we could take a look at this Kraken that was robbed. Robbed, I say, by a bug in the game. But you'll see when that happens. Plus, I had a request for a little more strategy breakdown in a video, and since this takes much less writing, I figured we could take a look at this game because it is a very good one. I'm in the Amagi, and this is a legendary tier battle, but you'll see it's no big deal being bottom tier in a legendary battle. You just have to change your approach a little bit. So the first issue that I need to address is that both of the Yamatos are down here, so that affects my initial approach on this map. Once I see that they're there, I need to get into a place where they both can't be shooting at me, because angling against a Yamato was near pointless, with a few exceptions, so I immediately moved to the right, and I took a pretty nasty hit there right off the bat. But I want to get this big island between me and one of them so I can get into this kiting position. This is the best position for the Imagi. It's practically broadcasting that with uh, all those turrets in the rear. I also have HE loaded and while that's an accident from the game before it's like a Bob Ross happy accident because as it turns out that's what I needed from this range. And you can see I get a couple fires on that Yamato. That Yamato they're making a beeline to the island in front of them, which is, honestly, it's fine with me. The blue Yamato that spawned with me is sitting in the mouth to A. And it looks like our destroyer isn't pushing in because, uh, who knows. The only destroyer on the red is that Kaba. And we already saw it way out there, so it's not really a threat to the lightning. And so I haven't abandoned my spawn, but I have put myself into a location where I have access to B and have split A into two halves, which I can use the terrain to choose how I engage any of the ships down here. And because I have access to B, you're going to see I look over for the target of opportunity with this Massachusetts, and I take this shot. Of course, that Massachusetts is probably not expecting this. The action they're engaged with is directly in front of them, but you can see on the minimap they are basically flat broadside to me. And I'm backing up to drop spot and will get a second salvo out on that Massachusetts. But I'm also repositioning to two different possibilities. I've got to angle myself as much as I can for the Yamato that's most likely coming around that southeast side of A, but I also have to angle in case this Yamato should back up from the island they are currently behind. Now I'm betting that the Yamato behind me is going to push around because they've popped their plane. So I'm continuing to reverse to have this large island cover my broadside so I'll only be engaged with one ship at a time. And that's usually something uh, that you want to do when you're bottom tier and dealing with multiple top tier ships. It's, it's possible to outplay one, but it's a lot harder to have to outplay too. So we can continue to be just steady Eddie here. There is no need for me to rush any engagement as I have the position I want. The Khabarovsk is still pretty far out there so it's no threat. And the Yamato to the north is still behind that island at A. So I can just turn my turrets to what's going to happen behind me. And it looks like our Yamato got some decent hits on this one when it turned out to go around the island. And now's the moment our destroyer's been waiting for. And they're gone. <laughs> so I'm going to pop my spotter plane because I know that this Yamato is going to continue forward. And I'm going to have a shot into its cheeks or its side. They can't see me. My shots are out. And it's going to be lights out for that Yamato. So with that, we're beginning to turn the tide down here. And I can push A. Our friendly Yamato is on there. And I want to get closer to them in case 
they have will to rebuild on, but also I want to assist my teammate and can adjust my plans to what actions they take. It's a lot easier to assist a teammate when you're close to them versus lobbing shots from 18 kilometers away. I'm not sure if you saw it in that last sequence, but some teammate shells came in for that Yamato I just sunk about two seconds too late. And you're going to see the same thing in this next sequence. It's worth noting that our C team abandoned their cap and the team is in full retreat down to this corner of the map, so we can't really dilly dally too much. We're going to be giving up too much map control. The red Yamato's backing up and ours is hurt and sliding behind cover, so I'm going to hit the brakes and position my five turrets to where this Yamato will be coming out. I'll have all ten guns trained on them and they'll only have the rear turret able to hit me. So we'll just wait here for the target of opportunity. And there we go. Three more citadels. I did take a little damage, but uh, nothing I couldn't, nothing I couldn't tank. So sit here and finish this cap. <laughs> and it's amusing because it looks like some of the guys from C are finally down here to assist in capping A. Thanks, guys. But uh, I got it. Alright, we're about to cap A, and I'm going to start pinging B to be capped. I'm not sure why this hasn't happened yet. The Kaba definitely has a range build on, so unless someone starts chasing them, they'll have a difficult time torping anyone. And now that they have zero support, yes, they can start fires, and it's fast and can be a real pain to hit, but it's also going to have a hard time contesting any caps. So as far as threats to me go, I'm putting it down at the bottom for now. Our friendly Kutuzov makes it all the way down to the map just to turn around, excuse me. And so I'm heading back towards the center of the map. We've got a friendly Yamato holding the middle at B. And so even though the Khabarovsk is a low threat, I'm not a cruiser, so I don't need to be hunting it. So I'm going to stick to the south side of B. And the red team has two battleships to our four, so I'm feeling pretty good about getting a crack in this game as the majority of the blue team is either behind me or heading the wrong way. And I've said it before, and I'll say it plenty more. Reading the minimap and reacting to the situation in a timely manner is really one of the last things to master in this game. You'll see, by the time that most of my team reacts, I'll be back at B, and they'll either be further away from the action or in a location where they can't really affect the outcome of this game. Oh, excuse me, grows a cur first. The Baltimore, that's a good target for me. And I'm angling my armor to the Bismarck that was just spotted to the east to take this shot. But no sooner do I do that than a Vladivostok pops up. So you'll see that I'm correcting my angling in an attempt to angle towards both of them. And then I'm going to take a shot at the Vladivostok. I'm going to get some okay damage, but I think I aimed a little high missing the Citadel here and not getting to sink it, unfortunately. So we turn in. We don't take any shots there, and I do not know what happened to that Bismarck, because I swear, when it was just spotted, it was full health, and now it's completely gone. And I didn't see this Yamato shoot at it, and I didn't see anything else. I think when I went back and watched, it burned to death, but somebody must have hit it quite hard. Anyway, that Vladivostok's going to go down here, and so I'm coming down to this edge because, again... No reason for me to push the Khabarovsk right now. We've got these two cruisers to deal with, so I may as well assist in getting rid of them. Our friendly Yamato hits that goddamn witch top pretty hard, which hopefully means that I'm going to be able to finish it. So I'm coming around the corner and going to get my shots lined up. We will see you in hell, Wichita. 
Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, the Yamato is going to get it. Hmm. So I still need my fourth ship sunk. But again, the Baltimore is a perfect target for it. So this Baltimore is actually going to come around flat broadside to me. And you're going to see me hold my shot just a second because I want to see if they are going to run into land. Because it sure looks like they're going to. But I do get the shot out. And there is ship number four. That was actually also our eighth citadel. But I had already completed that challenge. Okay, we are to the you cannot run forever portion of this video. And here comes your homework. Watch my C turret after this shot. See how it's turning? Why is it turning? Where is it turning? It turns right through the superstructure. Very interesting. So, instead of that turret facing the same direction as all of my other ones when I pop my plane and get this shot out, it's pointing the other direction. Would I have sunk this Khabarovsk had that turret been facing the right way? Probably. And I would have got the crack in there. But that is a bug in the game and I've seen it affect other ships too. So I'm not going to be able to sink that ship. And oh, saved by the bell. Alright, that's a look at what was my very first tier 7 ship. The Amagi. Definitely a different playstyle than the brawling battleships, but that doesn't mean you have to sit at the back of the map sniping. And just because you're bottom tier doesn't mean you need to hide from Yamatos. Just check the scoreboard. 3,111 XP for a very good game, and yep, that red Khabarovs got first and probably a fair amount of damage, but damage doesn't always equal wins. So that'll wrap it up here. If you need a little extra credit, just hit like. If you're looking to take this class pass-fail, hit dislike. Questions, comments, feedback, leave it down below. No need for after-school tutoring, just hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll get back out there for another one, and we'll talk soon.